Hi everyone, in this video I'll be talking about a couple things regarding the add-on I created for Blender. Uh, before we go any further, I just want you guys to know that I'm extremely new to Blender. I've only been using it for the past month or so, so please keep that in mind. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the installation. So before you can install it, you obviously have to download it. And you can do so on my GitHub page. Uh, all the links will be in the description, so don't worry about that. You will just go to code here and download zip. And the other places where you can download the add-on from will probably be Gumroad and the Blender Market. Although I can't say for sure because I haven't actually applied to put the add-on there yet. Uh, since it requires me to make a video that showcases it, which is why I'm making this in the first place. Uh, as far as I know, Blender doesn't allow price to be zero, so if you want to get the add-on for free, you can get it from GitHub or Gumroad. After you've downloaded uh, the add-on, all you have to do is press F4, go to Preferences, go to Add-ons, click Install, and then find the, find the zip that you downloaded. Press Install. You're gonna get this menu right here, and just enable it right here. As you can see, there is a couple of options here. The first one would be to check if there is an update for the add-on. All you have to do is click this here, and it's going to say whether your add-on is up to date or not. If it isn't, uh, there's going to be another button here that you just click once and that's it. Your add-on would be updated, you just have to restart Blender and that's pretty much it. Uh, the other option here is Show Panel. So if I disable this, uh, the panel on the right here is going to disappear. Uh, the last one uh, are hotkeys. You can also just disable them if you don't want them and you can rebind re them. But keep in mind if I were to change this to R, which is rotating blender, then uh, while pressing R nothing will happen. I mean something will happen which is my fixed rotation operator, but because this is already fixed, nothing is happening. Uh, it, it's not a problem though, because you can just go back to go back to settings here and return this to the original. Now, if you press uh, R again, the rotate is gonna work. Okay, to to show what the add-on actually does, uh, I'm not sure if how many of you are aware of this. So when you add a primitive shape, you get this pop-up down here and you can change stuff. Now if you click somewhere, it's going to disappear and you can actually get it back with F9. This is what the Blender does by default, but F9 only gives you back uh, the previous operator that you did. So if I were to move this cylinder and then I press F9, you will get the move operator not uh, the cylinder thing. What my add-on does is it doesn't matter what you're doing in the meantime uh, you can just call my operator and this is gonna pop up. Now you can change stuff. Uh, you can also just save presets if you wanted to. So if I don't know if I were to change the triangle fan, change some verts and uh, do plus name presets something. Presets 3, press OK. And if I were to duplicate this, call my operator again, change this to 3, and then reset 3. It's just going to turn it back. Just a little little something there. And that's pretty much the, the gist of it. Now, uh, one thing I have to mention is it does also work if you were to, I don't know, if you were to apply all transforms and then call the operator. As you can see, it didn't move at all, it just stayed there. The origin was fixed, the rotation was fixed as well. So it does have some kind of rotation. As you can see, when I apply this, it's, it's going to go back to zero. If I call it again, it's going to populate this with, uh, with true information about it. If we go into edit mode, you can see it's triangle fan. So if I were to delete all these faces. Now this would equal a cylinder that has no cap, right? So if I call my operator, it is going to say that it has no cap. Basically it calculates everything again from scratch every time you call it. 
and you can make changes to it obviously so it works for every primitive shape as you can see one thing I forgot to mention is that you can press OK here and then you're also gonna get the operator in the bottom left uh, so you can move around freely and if you don't press OK if you just click on the side uh, it's not gonna pop up on, on the bottom left but it will save the changes that you, th that you did Uh, I do have to mention that uh, for both plane and cube I did not add an operator because they don't have any other detail other than size which you can easily scale so I didn't see uh, a reason for me to add that but uh, I did make it so let's show the panel again I can just use the key band but I just want you to see uh, what I'm actually clicking so if I were to apply rotation and press fixed rotation it is going to work for cube now uh, this fixed rotation thing isn't going to work for more complicated uh, objects such as the monkey head so if I were to apply this rotation and press fixed rotation it isn't going to work because uh, the smart selection that I implemented so if the user doesn't select anything just like the object itself uh, it's going to select the first face that it finds that's why it goes rotated like this uh, I think I guess the first face uh, is like up here or something. Uh, but you, I did give a uh, user the option to select uh, things manually. So if you were to select these four and press fix rotation, then it's gonna, like those top four faces are gonna be facing up, upwards. Uh, you can also just select the vert and press fix rotation. Now if you don't have anything selected and you press fix rotation from edit mode, uh, it's going to assume it's going to do the smart selection thing, so it's going to select uh, the first face and it's not going to work for monkey, as you can see. But for uh, for cylinder here, sorry, if I were to press it and not having anything selected from edit mode, it is going to work because it does the selection for you basically. I forgot to mention one thing, uh, it's also going to work for um, for modifiers, so if I were to apply a bevel here and let's say uh, an array and then call my operator you can see that all of them are getting changed at the same time well, basically one of them is getting changed and it's getting projected. But yeah. And that's about it. I do want to talk about the limitations, however. So there is a couple. The first one, and the main one, the most obvious one would be um, names. So the way my, uh, my add-on works is it knows that this is a cylinder. Sorry, uh, that this is a cone because... Uh, the mesh name it starts with cone. Like, if you were to rename this to something else, um, I don't know, let's say cube, then it just wouldn't let you change it because it wouldn't know that this was a cone. Now, like I said, I am new to Blender, so I'm not sure if Blender actually knows what object. Uh, if Blender knows more details about an object other than just knowing its name and mesh name uh, from what I found it doesn't so I don't really know a different way to to implement this I do know that I could make code that would uh, calculate st uh, stuff on the fly and then realize oh this is a cone oh this is a cylinder but uh, it does seem a bit of an overkill so if you were to rename this to, let's say, actually if you were to rename the cylinder to cone, then the code wouldn't break, it would think that it's a cone with uh, both radiuses, radii, the same. Now another limitation would be uh, changing stuff in edit mode, like drastically changing the, the mesh. So let's say if I move this vert here and then I move 
I moved a bunch of these words around. Then I called the operator. Uh, you're gonna see that depth is gonna be messed up. So when you press OK and actually change the mesh, you will get something like this, which is, I guess it's not that big of a deal, but you cannot expect uh, the add-on to actually know what you, the changes that you did and then allow you to change the, uh, the amount of words and then move those words back where it, they were again. It just seems uh, impossible. Or close to impossible at least. So yeah, it, the program just simply won't work with, I mean, it, it's not going to crash or something. In this case at least. Now it also wouldn't work for a smaller change, which is, let's say, if I added, if I added a couple of loop cuts here, then the amount of verts would change, uh, which means that when I called the operator, it would say it has 267 verts, which is clearly not true. It doesn't have 267 sides, so it would make it bigger, and it would change the amount of verts it has as well. Uh, now I could actually fix this by changing the way the code works. Right now it calculates, it basically just divides uh, the total amount of words with two and that's how you get how many of them are on one side. Uh, I could instead do something like checking how many words are uh, at the topmost circle or bottommost circle and that's how I would get uh, the amount of sides. But it does seem unnecessary. I don't know if you guys think that it would be a nice addition to the to the add-on. Then I'm definitely gonna implement it. It's not a big deal. And to end the video, I just want to thank everyone for watching. I hope the add-on can save you some time. And that's it. I'll see you guys.